Hello everybody! So today, Mr. Mayo is going to walk you through a particular poem called The Drum. And what we'll be doing with it is we'll be, um, we'll be using it for our purposes to understand a sound device. In particular, we'll be understanding the sound device known as resonance. Resonance, the prefix there, R-E, meaning again. Uh, just like we see in repeat or return. Um, and sonance is that root in there, S-O-N, is where we get words like sound, sonar. It's a re repetition of the same sound. It's a little more general than some of the sound devices that we see like alliteration, assonance, consonance, cacophony, euphony. But resonance in general, um, and in particular with this poem, we see in how the meter, right? The meter is the syllables in each verse, and a verse is just a line. How the meter is used to resonate an understanding. It's phonetically symbolizing um, what the, the, the title of the poem, a drum. So, as we go through it in a moment, you'll hear how it has the same sound again and again on time. The meter follows a very specific pattern in order for you to, in order to better symbolize and better for the reader to uh, get something away from it. So, let's begin. Thrumming drum for our dear sons, the thrumming and drumming as powerful humming. On the distance you see it clear, here it comes, that dreadful drum. Now the beat has come to meet, and we shall find ourselves behind if we do not fight for our rock. Notice again and again and again, it's the same sound time and again, over and over. That's resonance. Resonance through meter, and specifically notice each quatrain, and finally our sestrain down here, um, is each line, even when there's only one, it's built in such a way that it evens itself out. Thrum, ming, one, two, drum, one, four, r, one, two, dear sons, one, two, the thrum, ming, three, and drum, ming, three, as powerful, notice we have four, hum, ming, four is two, three, three, four, two, it's evened itself out, on, one, the distance, three, you see it, three, clear, one. We've gone one, three, three, one. It's evened itself out again. Here, one, it comes to that dreadful three drum. One. Now, one, the beat, two, has come, two, to meet, two. Notice this one hasn't. It hasn't evened itself out. It's one, two, two, two. And that puts the reader almost out of out of rhythm now the beat has come to me we've we've come we've come a little out of step and it's jarring right it shakes us in a way and we too shall find to ourselves to behind and all of a sudden boom we're back on it again if we to do not to fight one for our to rock one again we've evened ourselves out so every single stanza except one has evened itself out it's always an even number of syllables usually focused two thrumming to drum one for our dear sons notice uh oh maybe it has multiple, multiple, right, that didn't even out the first stanza and the fifth stanza. And now we see that there's a little arrhythmic, right? It's not on rhythm. It's not following the same rhythm in these different moments. And that's 
very similar to the way that a person beats a drum. You can't always just maintain the same rhythm. You do make mistakes from time to time. We're all humans. We make errors. So, thrumming drum for our dear sons. The thrumming and drumming is powerful humming. On the distance you see it clear. Here it comes, that dreadful drum. When we're in these stanzas, it just it follows the pattern. We just sort of roll through it, or we drum through it, however you want to pun that or run around. But when we read the first and the fifth stanza, the arrhythmic pattern throws us off, and that plays a part to what this, if we look at the actual words for a moment, what the poem is about. It's not just a drum. The poem's not about a drum. That drum, that dreadful drum, fighting for our rock, the thrumming drum for our dear sons, there's something coming on the distance you see it clear something on the distance is coming closer boom 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 and it's getting louder and louder as powerful humming people hum right the thrumming and drumming is powerful humming someone is coming closer and there's fighting going on for our sons this fighting could be just between two people, but considering that, that there's so much about a drum in here, there's probably a real drum that we should be imagining. A drum coming closer. And it just so happens that up until about the middle of, ooh, the early part of, or the middle part of the 19th century, you know, the 1800s, Drums were used as devices to give orders on the battlefield. And suddenly we see a whole new world opening up in this poem. Thrumming drum for our dear sons. The thrumming and drumming is powerful humming. On the distance you see it clear. Here it comes, that dreadful drum. Now the beat has come to meet, and we shall find ourselves behind if we do not fight for our rock. Boom! And suddenly, the poem has opened up a whole new meaning to us. It's not just about a drum. It's not just a poem using a sound device resonance through the meter with each verse to even out and sound like a drum on an even pattern. It's this poem that is built with that sound device resonance for the reader to listen and almost be able to hear the drum themselves as if they could imagine themselves on a field about to take part in a battle and that drumming marching constants because the drumming is not just a drum right there's humming there's people coming and the humming is not just the drum it's the people marching soldiers a battle is about to take place or at the very least that's one interpretation of this poem right now, as usual, when Mr. Mayo teaches you about a poem, we've analyzed, A, the wording, we've analyzed uh, the imagery that it gives. Now, for this particular poem, we're trying to understand more about sound devices and how that helps us take out our understanding, what, how that sound device plays into the image of the poem that it's trying to give to us as the readers. Now, that's just one analysis. I'd be very happy to hear what you think that this poem means. And so, in the comments below, you are more than welcome to write down what you think the poem means yourself. And I want you to be specific, right? I want you to be specific in how the sound device helps you understand how does the resonance that very specific meter except when it you know gets thrown off in the first and the fifth stanzas how does that resonance help you paint your own understanding the image that comes into your head in the comments below feel free 
to write down your analysis, share your analysis of this poem. But be clear, right? Do a close read. You have to pull out evidence from the poem. You can't just say, well, I think that this song is about the drummer in a band. He's just banging away at his drums, man. You can't just give me that. You've got to give me evidence. What part of the poem? How do you see that? Why do you see that? So, I look forward to reading your comments below. I don't know what else to say after that. So, have a good evening. And as always, as John Green usually tells you, don't forget to, you know, keep being awesome. Bye-bye.